hello monarchs and welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be talking about my own experiences because this year I have taken more online classes than I ever have in my entire dance journey of <laughs> seven years. So I have some things to avoid that I've done and then I also have some things that I think would help you get the most out of the lessons that have certainly helped me. If you like this content and want more Zook reactions and tips and just things that I've learned over my seven years in Brazilian Zook, please do subscribe to the channel because that's how I know you want to see more. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so first I just want to start off by saying why do I take online classes? What do I like about them? Do I think they're valuable at all? Because otherwise this whole video is just pointless. So first off, I love online classes. I have really enjoyed not only teaching online classes, but also taking online classes. And there's definitely been some pros and cons, and we'll get into that when I get into the two types of videos live and pre-recorded. And so while the pandemic has certainly brought about a lot of negatives, I do think that there are some positives, and I do think online classes, the growth and the development of a lot of these online classes have been just so amazing. Like the fact that I was able to create my fearless framework and explore some of the techniques and things that I was with my students. And 2.0 is coming, I swear. I hear from a lot of people that they're not interested at all in online classes and I think that's such a shame because there's just so much opportunity to take lessons from so many different kinds of people. Like I would never have been able to take classes with Alexei Cavallo in France uh, in no normal times. Like I did not have a, a plan to go to France. But some pros of online classes just in general, no matter what kind of format they're in, is one, I get to do it in my house, uh, which is like so nice, there's no commuting anywhere. I don't know about you, but I live about 30 minutes to an hour away from most dance studios around me, so whether that be me teaching or taking classes, it was always kind of a bit of a drive uh, to get there, and so I really appreciate that I can do it in my house. Okay, so the first kind of class we're going to talk about is live online classes through Zoom or WebEx or whatever video platform your teacher has decided to use. So of course pros are going to be that it's live, you're all in a group together taking a class at the same time, which there's just something about that that feels so good because you feel like a sense of community um, that a lot of us are missing at this time. And also you get that feedback from the teacher. So usually uh, the teacher will have their camera on so you can see them, but then you'll also have your camera on so they can see you. Some cons, obviously with anything like Zoom or any other kind of video software, you're going to have lagging, you're going to have music cutting in and out, sometimes the audio or video cuts in and out, you know, that little like, skipping thing. And that's just going to happen. That's just kind of part of it. Also, teaching online is its own kind of of skill set that I personally am working on and it is not as easy as just teaching a class online. There is a learning curve to teaching online. There are things that work in class in person that just don't work online. So one of the cons I would say is that there are going to be classes that are taught, especially earlier on in um, quarantine, I think it's much better now, that where the teacher just isn't as well versed or is still new at teaching online, and that's just gonna be part of it. So let's talk about some things that I did that I would recommend you not do because it didn't help me very much in this learning process. One of the biggest things I feel like that I ran into taking online classes, especially the live ones was getting really frustrated. And what I mean by that is that when I was taking the classes, when things would lag, when the music wouldn't match up with the instructor's body, maybe the audio would cut out or it was unclear what they said, or if the one angle that they chose didn't show the movement very well and I couldn't quite figure out what they were doing, I would just get so frustrated is the best word I have for it. Because again, it's just inevitable. For example, in my Fearless Lead Framework program that I did a few months back, I was using YouTube for the music, and one day YouTube went down. And I didn't have any music on my computer to play. And I ended up having to play it on my phone. And as we all know on Zoom, if you play something from a speaker and it has to go through Zoom, if you can't share it from your computer, of course it lags and it doesn't sound good and there's all sorts of problems. One thing I've learned is just roll with the technical issues and, and just get as much out of it as you can. Take it as it comes in the sense that the fact that you're there, one, that you're taking the online class is such a big step. The fact that you're listening to anything they say you're doing, trying any of the things they're doing is already helpful. And so just getting as much out of it as you can and just allowing yourself to experience the class and letting the, the lagging or the music issues or whatever it might be just kind of roll off your back 
will really, really help you <laughs> in the long run of taking these online classes. Switching gears, so what helped me get the most out of these classes? I found that the more that I focused on me and how it felt in my own body and really just being in a space of, I'm gonna just be a little bit better today. Um, and this class is gonna help me do that. Again, this is a good mindset to take into any class. I just wanna make that clear that this is not only for online classes. This is a good mindset for in-person, congresses, whatever kind of class. It just so happens that I think it's a little bit amplified by online because it's still so new for a lot of us. The other thing I'll say is really, really important. Turning on your camera and allowing the, your whole body to be seen by the camera is really important. And I know for some classes they've actually said to turn off the camera because it helps with the bandwidth and everything like that. Most of the online live classes that I've taken, they do encourage you to keep the, the video on so that the teachers can see you. Because again, one of the pros of a live online class is that the teacher can give you immediate feedback if they can see you. And something else that happened in the Fearless Lead framework from the teacher's perspective was that I had a student who you couldn't see, you could only see him from the top up, so you could only see half of him. And just because of the space limitations and because of the camera that he had, that was just all, that was the best he could do in that situation. And so we worked together and he actually was able to use his phone camera and he put it on the floor so I could see his feet. And then he had his laptop camera, which he had originally been using, which showed the top half of him. And so on my end, I had two videos of him, which was a little funky, but I could see his feet and I could see his upper body and we made it work. And it really was just so worth it. And it really does help you get so much more out of the experience. So I'd highly, highly recommend even if you don't have a camera that can show your whole body or even if you don't have a big space, try and find these really creative workarounds. Also people putting, um, the camera's really high, so like on a bookshelf or on the top of a door somehow and, and like fixing them to a really high space and then it's shining down, you get so much more um, space in the video. And that's something, that's a trick that I've started learning. So now when I teach my classes, I actually have my camera up really high so my students can see more of a wide frame. And then also when I'm taking classes, I do the same thing so that the teachers can see me better. Uh, and it really has helped a whole lot in my experience with these online live classes. All right, it's your turn. Down below, let me know what your number one tip is for online classes. All right, the second kind of online class is pre-recorded. Now, the pros to pre-recorded is that you can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can skip, you can rewatch it. Honestly, I just love pre-recorded videos. I was more acquainted with pre-recorded videos pre-quarantine. I have several DVDs from uh, different instructors and I find them very helpful to always go back and reference. So cons, obviously you're not going to get the feedback. There's no sense of a group feeling <laughs> with uh, a pre-recorded class, even if it was recorded live and you see people or you can see people's comments, it's still just obviously not the same. But I would say another pro would be that you get to do it in the comfort of your own home by yourself privately and you can do it at any time you want. I recently took an online live class that was at 4 a.m. my time and luckily they offered a replay later. I still felt like I got a lot out of it and it was so much easier for me to do it on my own time and not have to worry about waking up at 4 a.m. to take that class. So some of the things to avoid with a pre-recorded class would be to watch it all the way through, save it, and never see it again. And just keep it in a drawer, keep it in a file, and never, never access it again. Honestly, I've bought several pre-recorded courses and never watched it. <laughs> Awkward. But in all honesty, I think a lot of us have probably done that. And so I would really encourage you to pick classes that are very, very specific, like a specific technique or a specific topic or something that's really, really narrowed down so that when you want to work on that specific thing, you have, oh, I know that I have this video from this instructor who talks about this specific thing. I find that when it's a technique class for Zouk dancers, those were the kind of courses that I was just like, great, I'm glad I have this course and then I never I never ended up really going back and watching them and I do plan to at some point I'll watch them okay if I'm honest the incentive to be like oh I really want to work on my musicality right now my first thought was not oh let me go look at that technique course you know what I mean I've had much better 
chance that I'll go watch it if it's something very specific. I have a pre-recorded ballet class, so when I know when I want to work on my ballet, which helps me feel more body awareness, it really helps me work control and balance and works my core, I know that I can go watch that ballet class and I know that very specifically those are the things I'll work on and it makes me feel so good. I love my ballet class. <laughs> Having something very specific that you buy and knowing what you're going to get out of it uh, is really, really helpful to actually being motivated to watch it and make your way through it because motivation in online classes, especially pre-recorded, can be tricky. Let's talk about my how to get the most out of it that I've discovered for myself. One of the things that I find really, really helpful is actually recording myself doing the material or working on something. So for instance, I'll take the ballet example. I will record myself doing the ballet and then I'll actually watch it and sometimes even watch the class, just like snippets of the class back, to see how they compare. Because honestly, my first goal is to make it feel good and make it feel stable and comfortable in my own body. And then I worry about what it looks like. <laughs> and like, oh, how close am I to the instructor? How close am I to reaching whatever they're asking me for? So always working internally first and then worrying about the external. But I will say also, I haven't been seeing a lot of people do this, but many teachers are really open to giving feedback. And so if you contact the instructor, now not all of them will do this, but if you contact the instructor and ask if you can send them video um, of you practicing the moves or the, the concepts or whatever it is, a lot of them are really open, especially right now, to giving feedback on those videos. I know several instructors and I encouraged my own students in my free sleep program and on my private lessons to send me videos of them practicing so that I can give feedback. But just remember that uh, when you're watching these pre-recorded videos that you really aren't alone, that the instructors a lot of times really do want to see you succeed they want you to enjoy their classes and they're more than willing to give feedback if you just ask. So that's, that's my big takeaway is ask, just ask. You'll be so surprised. So my last bonus point would be that if you're taking a lot of these online courses, whether it be the uh, live or pre-recorded or a mix of both, it really is helpful to get personalized feedback. And so taking private lessons I know can seem intimidating. I've heard people say they don't really feel like private lessons would help them or that they've never taken a private lessons or they just seem so expensive. I would really encourage you to look into private lessons, see how much they are, ask around. I have really personally improved so much from online classes, specifically taking solo online classes. I know I've heard from a lot of people that they don't feel like they can take online classes because they don't have a dance partner and I'll say there are just so many classes out there. Even just taking a zoo class as a solo person, lead or follow, is so amazingly helpful. You work on so many things that you don't have time for or don't get the chance to work on in group classes or with another person. And I can just say from personal experience and that are my students and that are my friends, I, the, the difference is, is astronomical. I feel like a completely different dancer and I owe that completely to taking and exploring more solo dance. And I've also been teaching solo uh, students in Zouk and the difference has been astronomical. So if you haven't considered online class because you think you need a partner or if you're only taking partner classes, highly, highly recommend taking um, some solo classes and really work with a teacher who's going to make you feel good, who you feel like you connect with and you like their energy. That's going to be key. If you like their energy, if you like them, the way they make you feel, take some private lessons with them. I'm currently have a few private lesson spots open. If you are interested at all, I have a link down below more about that and who it's for, who it's not for, all that kind of information. Taking some online private lessons or even in-person private lessons if, if people offer them in your area would really, really help work on and solidify some of the information that you're learning and intaking from these online classes because at the end of the day, private lessons are one of the best ways to improve and get that individualized attention that uh, really um, makes us better dancers so much faster. And at the end of the day, a lot of us are missing social dancing, we're missing being around our friends, and I don't want to discount that at all. Not to say that we aren't missing being in person because I am really missing being in person. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this wasn't a reaction video and it's been a minute since I have not done a reaction video, so thank you so much for making it to this point in the video and I will see you all in the next one.